What are these beautiful things? Um, spritzers? Yes, spritzers is the technical term. So, uh, I yeah. will go get one. I, every time I see a, a, a good, ooh, ooh, oh, that's a very nice mess. I mean, that one's ethanol, so don't inhale too okay, deeply. <laughs> Hey everybody, Adam Savage and I am in the National Parks Museum Conservation Lab, specifically in their paper department with Allison. How are you? I'm really well. How are you doing? Very good. Um, Allison, tell me what you're, what, you're, what you're showing me here. So here what we have is actually a newspaper that's part of the NPS History Collection. It's one of the collections that's here in the building with us. Mm -hmm. um, and we pulled it because this is more of a research collection, so you can actually handle this a little bit ah. as we do it. I've gotten permission from the curator for that. So these are kind of unusual. Not a lot of collections have them, so this information is unique. So we are trying to preserve this. You can see it's on a kind of discolored paper. Newsprint tends to have lignin in it as well as the better quality paper fibers. And so we're trying to pull out some of the acidity that develops over time and makes the paper become brittle. The, the moniker yellow journalism comes from the cheap paper that we used to print on newsprint <laughs> and you're pulling the yellow out of it. Is that correct? That's the goal here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sometimes we can't get all of the discoloration out of it. Mm -hmm. A lot of times what we're mostly removing is the acidity that builds up over time I and see. actually breaks down the paper fiber and makes it become weaker. So that you might not be changing its chemical composition or removing something significant, but enough so that the deterioration has ceased. Yes, we're slowing the de deterioration down a lot. And it would be amazing if we could bring it back to that original paper color. And sometimes you can like get something really satisfying yeah. out, but what you'll notice if you compare this to something similar, it's not all coming out. When you really try to get discoloration out, you wind up resorting to more invasive measures like bleach, bleach. which can be harder on the paper. Right, right. So with that said, I'll sh tell you a little bit about what's happening here. We have a polyethylene tray, non-reactive, yep. so we can use solvents in this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we add ethanol to the bath. Um, the bath water itself has been raised to a pH 8 with ammonium hydroxide, and that's just to help counterbalance the acid um, in the paper. Oh, fascinating. And what'll be interesting is we'll pull the paper out and we can test the pH of the water once we pull it out, and we can see how far it's come down. Sometimes it comes down a lot. Sometimes it comes down to almost three. I was wondering why I saw pH strips around. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's for the bath water and we'll do bathing in a couple. Um, today we'll just show this one bath, but usually we'll do a couple different cycles and at the end we'll add some calcium back into the paper as well to help buffer it and to like stabilize it for the future. Oh my God, so paper needs calcium for strong bones just like we do. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's the first step? Okay, so what we have in here is the paper sandwiched between Holotex, which is spun bond polyester, so that's basically just your dryer sheet without any fabric softener mm -hmm. on there. Non-woven. Exactly, synthetic. a non-woven synthetic. And so then we, it allows you to pick up even damp paper without touching the paper. And then we can just kind of pull that Is it up. sitting between two sheets of it? Exactly, it's sitting between two sheets of it. And so you can see how much discoloration wow, has come out of that. Wow, look at that, yeah. Yeah. And what I think is that we will get, in the next example, quite a bit more discoloration out. Oh, this one was cool. in pretty good shape. So I'm just gonna set this one down to dry over here. Let's go ahead and test our pH, see okay. where we're at. All right, uh, it looks like we may be all the way down to four. Oh, wow. Yeah. Or maybe a little higher than that. Someplace between four and five. That's the goal is to pull out those acids. Yes, because the acidity, as it build, the acid builds up in there, it's breaking down the cellulose fibers right. and it's sort of a self-perpetuating reaction too. So the more acidic it gets, the more the paper fibers deteriorate, the more acid develops. And so it will keep going on and on itself, yeah. So I'm curious about this process, how old this process may be. And if you guys have data from, I don't know, a newspaper you did this process to 20 years ago and what its acid content might be today. Oh, that's a really great question. Um, I actually don't know how long bathing has been done. I constantly wonder how anybody did it before they had the spun pond <laughs> polyester. Yeah. That's the, the miracle of paper conservation. The other method we use to bathe things sometimes, if they're really fragile, if you have something that has like a friable media or water soluble media or something really fragile as we can bathe on the suction table. Oh. And this is uh, this is an example of something that we might have bathed on the suction table. This is from Blue Ridge National Parkway, wow. Scenic Parkway. It is of Moses Cone, um, but you can see if you get really close, there's some hand coloring in there. Like if you look at his pupils, they're hand colored. Oh, yes. It is actually photographic, but there's a lot of hand mm -hmm. coloring in there as well. You can see some blue and some highlighting on the edges. Mm -hmm. Some of that is going to be silver mirroring, so that's deterioration coming oh. to the top of the gelatin. 
Um, so you'll see that in a lot of old photographs. But we can't wash this one right away because it is actually backed. And so my, my plan to have it ready for you got a little bit foiled. So we're washing a study collection object instead, but it's gonna be really fun to wash. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll crank it up. Um, so this is our vacuum suction table. And this is just a plate with a perforated plate on top and an egress, and it's just pulling this down. So it holds the paper down to this. Yes. But you're saying we're going to spray it so it's pulling the water then through it? Yes, exactly. So that's the case. Like if you had something that had a media that you're worried about solubilizing and like bleeding sideways at all, by pulling it straight down, you're stopping your media from going anywhere. You don't have to have water sitting on the surface and oh, affecting wow. it. Oh, that's really cool. It's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, so that's not necessarily the case this, for this one. Just before we get started, I want to give you a sense of like how discolored this oh, is. Wow. So this newspaper is actually from 1868. This is actually part of our study collection, <clears> but <throat> so you can handle it and we can kind of experiment with it and see what it does. Wow. Um, it's been torn too. <clears throat> it's a little torn up. And so that's another thing that the suction table can be nice for is it can kind of hold, if you're worried about tears getting worse, it yeah. can kind of stop things from moving around. Um, it can almost, it's funny, every object really does tell you about how it's been sitting. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, like you can tell the bottom edge of this is really yep. discolored. That's been folded under. This bottom edge has been a little bit protected. The side's definitely been face up, yeah. probably in the light and probably in a poor environment. But this um, actually does look like a better quality paper fiber than that. And so the discoloration on this, rather than coming from the poor quality paper fiber, is probably coming a lot from light deterioration. Gotcha. And that, I think, should come out pretty well. So to start this out, we need to relax the paper fibers a little bit so that it can expand before we pull the vacuum on it okay. so that the wrinkles don't get set in the paper. Uh, this sounds like something learned by institutional knowledge. <laughs> may have had it happen. You never know. Fair. Um, but this is something, so you're just going to kind of like... Oh, wow. That loose. Mm -hmm. That gentle. Mm -hmm. And we're going to kind of like let it sit just for a second. And you can see it's starting to soak in. Oh, my goodness. Very quickly. It's... Really, really quickly. And I had a sense that this paper, sometimes you, you definitely get a sense for what paper is going to do what. But this one's really, really, you can touch this one. This one's like really, really soft. You can tell it probably doesn't have much sizing on it. Yeah. So it's going to absorb that water almost instantaneously. It really did. It discolored almost right away. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, I gotta get one of these. <laughs> All right, let's pull our vacuum and see what happens. Okay. So we'll just start it slowly. And you can see I blocked off most of it. Right, yeah, you're localizing the, oh yeah. And a couple little wrinkles in there. Let's see if we can jog those out a little. My guess would be this paper feels really nice. It's probably a cotton or a linen paper, most likely cotton given the date. And that's, you know, that's paper back going back as far as they made it in Europe. So right, that's right. that technology didn't change and this paper should hold up in good conditions for a pretty long time. Okay, so this is the same solution that we used for the other bath. It's just ammonium hydroxide. We're just gonna work on bringing the pH down a little bit and then, but just to sort of like keep it evenly wet. You don't wanna see any areas getting dry. If you start to see something getting dry, that's a good indication that it'll start to like pull discoloration to that area as it dries. Ah. As, oh, here, you can start to see if you peek under this corner here. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah, just how much, even in that amount of time, how much discoloration we're, we're pulling out of that. That's insane. Holy cow, that's so satisfying. It's oh, so, oh, it's oh, so oh. satisfying. Oop, don't worry about it. <laughs> But we used this uh, recently on a bunch of gouache watercolors from uh, Petersburg. And so those had like a really heavy, friable pigment on the front. And so this was perfect for that. And they were on a really quality paper. I'm going to pull a little bit more of a vacuum just so we can get a little more washing action. Oh, excellent. Oh, it's really neat watching the water land on the surface and then wet through. That is fascinating. And it's going through this too, through this stuff as well. Goes right through the holotex, yeah. So. Uh, not that we're going to go through this whole process, but the next stage here after we saturate it would be remove the blotter paper, replace it, mm -hmm. do the same thing again. Yeah, I would probably do a couple more baths of this. There are other things we can add to the baths. We can use um, sodium citrate, which is like a mild chelator, um, which can help pull out sort of like attached metallic particles and help loosen dirt. So depending on what the wow. project is, we can add that. Um, we can add, uh, we'll use calcium hydroxide a lot as sort of like a finishing bath, again, to add the calcium back. back. And um, 
also calcium bicarbonate. If you really want a bang for your butt, that buck that will add a lot of calcium to your paper. So if you use a chelator like um, ammonium or sodium citrate or something similar that's actually pulling a lot of calcium out of the paper, you got to throw a lot more back in. It, that word you use, chelator, is mm -hmm. that the process of removing calcium? So those are molecules that um, carry a fairly strong charge and a lot of times they have like a lot of fingers po poking off of them and so that's enough to sort of like attach on to some of the metallic particles oh. and dirt in there and sort of pull them out of the paper. So you will get more out of a paper by using a chelator, chelator than you would by just using uh, like an acid or a base. Oh, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Sort of like the way soap grabs oil and brings it along with mm -hmm. it. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, super, yeah. super cool. It's very, it's very useful. Um, I could imagine that you're staring at these stained pages and attempting to move the yellow out and through them, but like you've been staring at it so long, it's really hard to know if you've made progress. Mm -hmm. Does that happen? Yes, it, it definitely happens. And a lot of times you won't, like you'll you'll be like, oh, did I make any difference at all? And you won't know until you dry it out and you you compare your before treatment pictures to your after treatment pictures and you you see the actual satisfying difference. In so sometimes you, you have to come in in the morning to know how well you did? Yes, exactly. Sometimes <laughs> you have to come back the next day and sometimes you leave a little bit scared and and you cover it up and then you come back and you're like, whew, it looks great. Um, you've been complimenting this paper for being having cotton and being durable. I'm curious, like, what are the objects that you get where you're like, oh, this paper, it's just gonna be so bad. Is it like a, 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 a horse racing ticket or a bus pass or something like that? It is actually, it tends to be later newspapers. Those are the oh. ones that you're scared of. It's the it's the yellow journalism. Yeah, it's yeah. the it's the ones that have, they have a lignin content in the pulp that they didn't get out of there. So it's when they started, you know, linen and cotton are really, really nice fibers. As soon as they starting putting trees in their paper, that's when things go downhill. So late part of the 19th century, early part of the 20th century, paper just starts to get a little bit scary to work on. So it's the wood pulp that's the problem. It's the wood pulp that's the problem. And then eventually they developed better ways of treating it so they can remove that lignin content, make it a little bit more stable. And so if you have like a bond printer paper now, that still has wood pulp content in yeah. it, but they've removed the piece of it that makes it really scary to work with. Um, it must be thrilling to come in the morning and see progress and see this. I guess I really, I didn't know until today that you could remove yellow from newspaper or you know, from old prints. Yeah. Also, all the toys here, uh, the, this beautiful vacuum table and the spritz bottle, I'm, I'm <laughs> having some real tool envy. This is wonderful. Yeah, this one is brand, brand new. And so it just has like a really, ju like just out of the box for you. <laughs> <laughs> new car smell. Yeah, sometimes they're a little bit fiddly, but yeah, they do, they do play nice. Allison, thank you so much for walking me through. This is really awesome. Yeah, you're very welcome. I'm glad you could check it out.